If your fiance breaks up with you, can you actually sue them? Well, if they broke their promise to marry you and refused to return the engagement ring, then yes. You might think this is focused on women not returning rings, but you're in for a big surprise. Women aren't the only ones who get engagement rings anymore because men have been receiving rings in increasing numbers. Hold on though, because we're gonna be talking about a lot more than just engagement rings here. In Texas, you could sue your ex-fiance for breach of promise to marry to get money, for return of gifts and contemplation of marriage, or both. When the two of you were first engaged, someone proposed and the other person accepted that proposal. The proposal may have involved an exchange of a ring or some other gift. Does that sound like a contract? Good, because it is. An agreement to be married is a valid and binding contract. If your ex-fiance promised to marry you and then broke off the engagement, then they've breached the contract. If your initial thought is, wow, that sounds petty, then you might not realize how much money is at stake here. Remember that a lot of time, money, and other gifts can be invested into a marriage before you both say, I do. There are three types of damages you can recover if your ex-fiance breached their promise to marry you. Economic, non-economic, and exemplary. Let's talk economic damages. These are the most likely damages that you'll be able to recover and are sometimes called actual damages. These damages aren't going to get you more money than you've expended because they're intended to compensate you for actual economic or financial loss. The average cost of a wedding in Texas in 2023 is over $30,000. Weddings aren't planned overnight, so you probably started incurring expenses for your big day months or even years in advance. These might include deposits for the wedding venue, cake, caterer, photographer, DJ, or pretty much any other provable out-of-pocket expenses. Because economic damages are for losses that you've directly suffered, you'll probably prove them with receipts. Let's talk non-economic damages. These are the less likely damages that you'll be able to recover. These are the damages that you can't exactly prove with receipts or out-of-pocket expenses. These might include mental or emotional pain or anguish, inconvenience, loss of enjoyment of life, injury to reputation, and all other non-financial losses. Obviously, these sorts of damages are going to be much harder to prove because there aren't financial records to prove them. So, how do you prove that you've actually suffered this harm then? If you've had to undergo counseling, been diagnosed with depression or anxiety, or if you've been placed on psychotropic medications, then these can be used to show your mental state and the harm to it. Let's talk exemplary damages. These type of damages are rarely awarded and you're very unlikely to recover them. That's not to say it's impossible, it's just unlikely. These damages are also called punitive damages because they're meant to punish your ex-fiance rather than just restore you for your losses. Imagine this, your ex-fiance had no intention of ever marrying you, but proposed solely so they could humiliate you by leaving you at the altar. Well, that's called fraud. You could probably sue your ex-fiance for fraud as an alternate theory and not just for their breach of promise to marry. Now, imagine this. Your ex-fiance lost interest in your relationship, but rather than breaking up with you, they stayed in the relationship in order to string you along and watch your humiliation at the altar when they refused to say, I do. I'd argue that this would constitute malicious behavior. Here's why those two scenarios are relevant. If you want to recover exemplary damages, then you have to prove that your ex-fiance committed fraud, malice, or gross negligence. It's harder to win exemplary damages because you have to prove them by clear and convincing evidence. That's the same burden of proof in order to terminate someone's parental rights. And the jury has to be unanimous in their award. If you gave your ex-fiance an engagement ring or any other gift in contemplation of marriage, then you might be able to recover that property if your ex-fiance breaches their promise to marry. If you and your ex-fiance have a written agreement regarding the disposition of the ring or gifts if the two of you don't get married, then that agreement is gonna control. However, any agreement must be in writing and signed to be enforceable. If it isn't in writing, then we default to the conditional gift rule. A gift to a person to whom the donor is engaged to be married, made in contemplation of marriage, is conditional. And on breach of the marriage engagement by the donee, the property may be recovered by the donor. Notice how the rule applies to gifts and not just to rings. Courts have permitted the recovery of rings, personal property, and even real property, like land and houses, given in contemplation of marriage under the conditional gift rule. Beware, though, that recovery under this rule requires that the donee or recipient be the breaching party. If you gave the gift, but you're the one who breaks off the engagement, then you're the breaching party and you're not entitled to recover the ring or any other gifts. If your ex-fiance fails to return the engagement ring or other gifts, then you're going to have to file a lawsuit to get them back. If you've been watching us a while, 
then you know that you can recover attorney's fees in very limited circumstances. You probably also remember that one of these circumstances where you're permitted to recover attorney's fees is for breach of an oral or written contract. Rejoice! There are certain steps that you and your attorney will have to take in order to recover attorney's fees from your ex-fiance, but that's gonna have to be an entirely separate video altogether. For most breaches of contract, you have four years to file suit after the breach. A lawsuit for breach of promise to marry though must be filed against your ex-fiance within one year of the breach. Deciding to file suit is not an easy choice, especially when you're likely still mourning the loss of the relationship. Most people decide to simply move on from the pain before they start considering their options. But by then, the one year period has already passed and it's too late. Breaking off an engagement is emotionally devastating. However, under the law, it doesn't also have to be financially devastating. 